rational curves on the metric three pole. That's in 1991. Um, these predictions of the uh, mathematical verified was done by Gibbons and again moving up in 1996. Uh, but in the meantime, we can say that it's introduced this uh, homological mirror in the future in 1994, uh, which says that to think that Now let me talk. 
to get this uh, equivalence to work, we need to do some formal change of variables psi in the coefficient field lambda. This takes the generator R, sends it to R times some uh, formal power series whose leading order term is plus or minus one. Uh, so this psi is what you call the mirror map, and uh, very importantly, uh, I'm not able to, to work out work out what the higher order terms in this psi are. In, in particular, from that closed screen version of mirror symmetry, which, which is known, uh, there is also a mirror map that appears in that. Uh, and you would of course expect that mirror map to be the same as the one that appears in this theorem. But uh, the, the connection between the chi category and, and robot with invariants isn't uh, well enough controlled to say yet yeah, that, that these really are the same environment. So this is an unsatisfactory aspect of the Turns out that uh, these three properties characterize the same infinity algebra up to quasi isomorphism and the formal change of variables in this uh, power series ring up. So, to briefly tell you why this result looks like it should be true, I'll say the details. But so, by this partial Cassano Rosenberg isomorphism, we know what this. Uh, Hochschild homology, this whole Hochschild homology group is. And the part we're interested in is TA covariant part, because it's the TA covariant A infinity algebra, and the degree 2 part, because that's where A infinity structures live. And this turns out to be uh, quite simple. Uh, 
generated as a C of T module by just these two kinds of terms that appear in W. And now it turns out that uh, using this fact, uh, no matter what those higher order terms are, uh, we can always uh, crush them down into the, these two leading order terms by some formal chain of variables. That's the gist of this thing. So we have this script A, A infinity algebra, unique up to uh, formal chain of variables. Now it turns out that both A and B model categories can be very simply described in terms of such a name. They are a perf of A semi direct product with G, where G is Z mod n to the n minus 1, and we can cite this 6 to the n minus 1. We have some action of G on our own in the algebra, means we can take the semi direct product, and then we tensor with the Novikov field, where Novikov field is an R algebra via the map that sends each RJ to the generator R. So, in particular, uh, implicit in the statement, I've got this for, for such an A, it's actually going to be a different A for the A and B models, and the fact that these properties only characterize A up to formal chain of variables is the origin of this mirror map that appears in the Okay, so that's a description of the, of the categories. Uh, so how do we see this on the B-model side? Uh, very briefly, we look at matrix factorizations of this super potential. Uh, and it turns out this uh, A pops out as a part of the category of matrix factorizations, and then we use uh, lambda ginsburg quality out correspondence to relate this to, uh, to a category of coherent sheets. But the, the bulk of this talk, in fact, probably the rest of this talk, is going to be Proving that this script A is what you get on the higher category side. Okay, so how are we, how are we going to understand the higher category? Well, here's the, the setup. We can start with a compact color map called X. Uh, look at some uh, normal crossing divisor of D uh, with K smooth irreducible components, each of which is operational in the symplectic form. The main example we're going to think about is uh, Fermat hypersurfaces, not vanishing in the Fermat polynomial inside the projective space with the n coordinate devices. Okay, so now I'm going to tell you about two versions of the Picard uh, First one is the relative Picard. Oh, I have equations there. Don't worry, this one's going to be the one that appeared in the field. This is the one you usually use. So this relative for Bayer category is the one that's defined over this power series ring rather than the non uh, Its objects are Lagrangians in X which avoid the divisors D. Uh, the morphism spaces are generated as R modules by intersection points between the Lagrangians, uh, modulo some story about the perfect, and these intersections aren't transverse. And the A infinity structure maps, um, US, count all morphic disks mapping into X with a uh, boundary on the relevant directions. So, let me, uh, well, let me uh, that here. So, for example,
but we can describe how this homomorphic disk intersects with these devices. And so this will be a finite count, so what we want to do is instead of saying this is the coefficient of P naught, say it's the coefficient of R1, R2 squared times P naught. That's what I'm saying here, that each disk comes with some monomial that the extract power intersects. And now, that's the grading. So the entire category is usually z graded. This is a pretty well known story. There's also an additional grading in H1 of the complement of these devices. And very briefly, what that's saying is that we've got some homomorphic disk contributing to A infinity structure map. If we remove a little ball around each uh, point where it intersects the device, then what remains defines some homology between the boundary of this disk and this collection of little meridian loops around the device. So that's saying some H1 class uh, vanishes. So the idea is that we actually equip R1 with the grading that's the meridian loop around the device of D1, same with R2 and so on, and there's some story for equipping these generators with gradings as well. So we get this extra grading. Nice thing. Okay. Now the full Foucault category. Uh, this is for this. This is the one here in the field. Find out the no code field. Arbitrary Lagrangians and X. Morphism space is defined in the same way. Counts homomorphic disks uh, with a coefficient R to the symplectic theory. But we lose this extra H1. Okay, so uh, clearly this relative Foucault category has far fewer objects than the full Foucault category, but it turns out that it's going to be embedding. After we tensor with the Novikov field, and the embedding into the full Foucault category, and it will turn out in our case that this, the image of this embedding generates the whole Foucault category. I'm going to define a new version the, uh, very closely related to the, all, uh, to the relative Foucault category. It's a sort of all of all category in which Everything is the same, except that disks are required to have ramifications of like AJ on the line of DJ where they intersect. And this all whole category has a property we have some branch cover, branch with degree AJ about the lines of DJ, then uh, the relative decay category of the cover, this all of all decay category, semi direct product with the character group, the cover group. So, uh, what is this saying? And this is somehow doesn't have or shouldn't have any geometric content. Uh, it's saying that homomorphic disks with ramification downstairs lift to honest homomorphic disks upstairs. And then we've got some, we just have to keep track of uh, the action of the covering group on the lifts, this modulized space of homomorphic disks downstairs. We're not solving a new difficult problem. We just need some sort of full keeping thing for keeping track of how the covering group acts on the difference of these modular spaces. And that's called semi group product. Okay. Uh, now I want to relate the, uh, this overall Foucault category to the normal Foucault category. So we write out the A infinity structure maps expanding in powers of RJ. Uh, then the A infinity equations say that these first order deformation classes, alpha J star, are functional cochains for the A infinity algebra with uh, structure maps mu zero star, the order zero bar. We call these classes first order deformation classes. Now, uh, the result is that the first order deformation classes 
that main infinity structure uh, looks like this, mu zero plus the first order bit plus the graph and higher order terms. Then in your whole category, you have the same mu zero because homomorphic disks that don't intersect any divisors just live straight upstairs. And then we have the first order term where we take the power of uh, these first order parts, uh, the power being your branch of uh, branching uh, now. And quadratic and higher order terms are whatever they are. They didn't matter for our characterization of this pain in the algebra page. So now let's uh, look at this uh, hypersurface as a branch cover. If you look at Xn as the degree n from our hypersurface, and it's a branch cover of Cpn uh, minus 2, just by this map, very simply. And it has a ramification of degree n about each of the devices. Uh, so this uh, CPN minus 2, after we remove n devices, is what's called the generalized pair of pants. Uh, in particular, CD1 minus 3 points is what we usually think of as pair of pants. So the strategy for finding this a infinity algebra A that I described at the start is to construct just a single immersed Lagrangian sphere inside this pair of tanks and compute its inamorphism algebra relative to chi category of the first order, then use this uh, result about the branch covers to pass up to the, the A infinity subcategory chi category up here generated by loops of this L. This L under this branch cover. So here is a picture of L. A picture, so this is CP1 taking the double cover S1 of RP1 and pushing it off itself in opposite directions using some more function. Uh, more generally, we uh, start with the double cover SN minus 2 of RPN minus 2 inside the projective space and push it off by some more sum. Uh, we're going to push it off in a way that it avoids the divisors, then the gradient vector field of this more sumption has to be transverse to the real parts of these divisors. So here's a picture of what it looks like in the two-dimensional case. Uh, these dotted lines are the intersections of the divisors with the real locus, and then these arrows are more slow lines is more something we chose. So another perspective on this Lagrangian is to look at uh, what happens when you project it to the uh, argument variables for the, the torus uh, under this this map from CPN minus one with the divisors removed, which of course is C star from N minus one, project it to the argument map. Turns out the, the image of this pair of pants is a union of two triangles inside the torus, and the image of this Lagrangian is this hexagon that kind of goes around the map. Similarly, two-dimensional case, the image of the pair of pants is the complement of this kind of crystal shape inside the torus, and the image of this Lagrangian is the boundary of the crystal shape. In fact, those more slow lines project to the edges of the crystal. <coughs> How do we make computations in the Kaya category? Well, we've constructed this Lagrangian by uh, pushing the real locus off itself, small amount. So we degenerate this Lagrangian back down onto the real locus. Holomorphic disks with boundary on the Lagrangian degenerate to uh, things called curly trees, which are some combination of flow line, more flow lines of this force function, holomorphic disks with boundary. Of course, we know what the disks with boundary and RPN look like. They are halves of algebraic curves uh, in, inside the city. So here's a picture of what such a curly tree looks like. It's got bits that look like all disks, and bits that are more slow lines of our function here. So it turns out computations in the Kaya category reduced to counting these sorts of So, uh, let me go through the, the result. Uh, it turns out that 
that you can identify the generators, the self intersections of this Lagrangian, and they're in natural correspondence with the generators of the exterior algebra. And you can work out what the, the product is at zero or quarter, and it gives you the, the exterior product. The higher A infinity products correspond to some class in functional cohomology. They correspond to exactly this class, which is the, the leading order term of that W I wrote on the first slide. This corresponds to a single polymorphic disk, which is a, a mu n that it takes as input all the generators of the exterior algebra and spits out the other. So here's a picture in the one dimensional case. So, Previously, I had a picture of this Lagrangian. I had CP1 with its equator. This picture is uh, looking from on top, from the North Pole. And uh, here's the real locus, and here's our this trefoil that's our Lagrangian. So these self intersection points give rise to generators of the inner algebra of this Lagrangian, uh, as I've indicated. And this gray disk uh, gives you a product. Uh, mu2 of theta1, theta2 gives you theta1 minus theta2. Similarly, you can get all the products you want in the exterior of the world. Um, then I told you about, here, yeah, I told you about this one higher product that we get. In this one dimensional case, that corresponds to actually the same gray triangle, but now regarded as a degenerate foregone. As input theta 1, input theta 2, input theta 3, and output a degenerate corner here, which corresponds to the identity in our exterior. So I'm almost out of time. Um, now I'll tell you what happens at the first order. Uh, turns out the first order deformation class looks like sum of rj, uj in this cultural cohomology. So recalling our result about uh, how deformation classes behave when you pass to a, an overfold Akai category, the zero order part stays the same. The first order parts, we start with uj, we take it to the power of the overfolding without the corresponding device. So we get uj to the n. And we have a quadratic from high order, which doesn't matter for our result. So this Algebra has all the properties we require to call it A. It's a, an exterior algebra. It's T equivariant because of this extra grading on the relative for higher category that I told you about, came from this picture here. And it has higher A infinity products corresponding to this, this thing to first order. That characterized A. Let me draw a picture of these. First order classes, so these, these terms rj and uj correspond to this teardrop shape of an input theta 1, output a generic point which is the identity, and it intersects the bias of d1 once. So because it intersects the bias of d1, it's a term r1, that's this r1 times u1 term of d1. Now let's see what happens in the branch cover. The elliptic curve as the branch cover of CP1. So, whereas previously CP1 was made up of two triangles uh, glued along the boundary, now around each of these divisor points we have six triangles because there's order three branching the elliptic curve of CP1. And now this gray triangle, which gave us the, the zero order for Kaya category. Just lift straight upstairs, no problem. The first order class, that teardrop shape, does not lift. Instead, we have something, uh, this clover leaf shape, which looks like a branch cover of it, has inputs theta 3, theta 3, and theta 3, intersects divides of d3 once. So this corresponds to a term r3 u3 cubed uh, in this part of the, the superintendent. Okay. So that's a picture of how we get the first order category. Then it's this deformation theory argument saying this characterizes it up to America. Uh, the remaining part of the argument is to show that 
request sends the class of the symplectic form to uh, R del mu star del R. So some sort of Euler vector field evaluated on the AND infinity structure maps in our Kaya vector. In our case, under this description of Hochschild cohomology as Jacobian ring, this just corresponds to R del W del R, where W was this the information class. And that turns out to be uh, some non-zero number times the class U in here. Uh, now, one of the most useful properties of this uh, map from quantum cohomology to Hochschild cohomology is that it respects the algebra structure. Uh, in particular, we take the top power of the class of the symplectic form, that maps to some multiple of u to the power n minus 2, which does not vanish in this polynomial of n. So indeed, the top power of the symplectic form is some, uh, it lies in degree, in the top degree in quantum cohomology, and it maps to something non zero. So we've checked that this generation criterion holds. So our collection of Lagrangians split generates the Kaya uh, So now we've achieved the, the first part of our, our program. We've completely described the Fakaya category. Uh, it has this full subcategory, which we've computed up to the mirror map. And this full subcategory split generates. So, you know, in, in some sense, you should think about this, this thing as saying the Fakaya category is a non commutative space, is affine. And it looks like spec of this and the integer. Okay. Now, in the remaining time, uh, I will tell you about how to see this on the theme of the side. So, to see this same algebra emerging on the beam model, uh, we make computations uh, in the category of matrix factorizations of this superpotential in, in this ring here, polynomial ring. Over R, where R is this new form power series. Uh, we consider a specific matrix factorization of W, uh, which uh, is the matrix factorization corresponding to S uh, modulo this idea. So if R were a field here, this would be the matrix factorization corresponding to the structure sheet of the origin. So this, this matrix factorization is going to correspond to uh, the Lagrangian we were talking about earlier on the mirror symmetry. So let's calculate the end of the algebra. It uh, uh, should, of course, be a, a deformation of the end of the algebra of the structure sheet of the origin in coherent sheets on affine space. It's an exterior algebra. Uh, applying the homological perturbation layer, we construct a minimal model deformation classes uh, turn out to be exactly given by the uh, coefficients in the superpotential W. And this is classes in Hochschild cohomology defining the deformation. And then it follows from the result I told you at the start. Uh, this characterizes this endomorphism algebra up to a formal change of variables in R. That means we've equated this, this script B part of the category matrix factorizations with script A part of the all the whole of the Kaya category. And so uh, I'm, I'm sorry I'm confused. Am I, am I now done? Well, you still have so, three minutes. Three minutes, okay. Sorry. Thank you. 
this is the dilemma against the Columbia correspondence that I mentioned towards the start of the talk. So, Paul Locke's theorem says that uh, Z mod N for variant matrix factorizations are uh, equivalent to coherent sheets. Uh, this is because this uh, Y N tilde is the vanishing locus of W in projective space. This means that G equivariant matrix factorizations are G mod Zn equivariant coherent sheets and this Y and tilde. And this G mod Zn is exactly uh, the group gamma that I have appeared in the definition of Yn at the start. So somehow this, this group G gets split, split into two parts. One that turns it into a category of coherent sheets and one that quotients that variety It turns out that the objects corresponding to these twists of O0 under the logs correspondence are exactly the twists of the restriction, restriction of the balance and exceptional collection uh, by characters of G, and in particular they generate that category of coherent sheets. So now I've equated these the same model and B model, showing that two categories of equated generate everything. So this completes the proof of the theory. So, so as you say, this is a very it's a, it's a very uh, specific situation, and it, I mean it's it's not clear to me. I mean, this somehow the, the the obstruction when I tried to do something like that was I mean constructing this Lagrangian L using this this method. So, I mean, it's a very general technique. Got the real locus and taking some cover of it and pushing off, and then you get this you know, very explicit way of computing uh, part of the Fourier category. Um, but yeah, some, somehow there's just not such a nice choice of this this Lagrangian that I mean, yeah. So somehow it's I, it's completely mysterious to me how to how to generalize this. So I, I've tried and yeah, I, it's, it's not clear that it's within. The, 